Let us bless God for this moment. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor Philip Macaulay, a great man of faith, a man of integrity. A man of the seal of the Lord. A man of dignity. A man full of the interest of Christ concerning so winning. We are giving thanks for him and we are praying for him that God will help him to lead quiet and peaceable life. But God will help him. God will guide him. God will strengthen him. God will anoint him. God will keep his feet. According to verse number 29. He keeps the feet of his spirit. For my strength shall no man prevail. Dear Bob, by the summer, we said, Ready, but we put one. Everybody is sitting now. What did he do to them? Do that. Pray for him. The Father, you will help him. The Father, you will empower him. You pray, O God. Let my come. Let your mighty hand rest upon you. We thank you for what you have used for already. But we pray the Lord to empower him for masteries. For more than is ahead of him. Let the power of the mighty Lord Jesus Christ speak for him. Let your name rest upon him. Father, I secure him on every side. Glorify your name in his life. Grant him all that is required to fulfill this ministry. This condition. Oh Lord, our God. Oh Lord, our God.
Yeah. 
So Lord, give me a listening ear and a heart that is reset. Father, help me speak to my heart. Speak to my soul. May I not miss the word of God this morning. If you are there already, say amen. amen. If you are not there, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am waiting for you. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are not there, say amen. So titles of our favorite state. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. You see, the reason we must affirm certain things constantly is because we easily forget. It is part of the human nature to forget things that are important to the spirit. We cannot forget our bad days. You cannot forget the day you got married and the climate and climatic condition on that day. You can't forget. You remember. In fact, you have documented it. You have a diary for things that are of great importance to you. But when it comes to our spirituality, we seem to be careless. We are not too mindful of some things. That is why Paul said to Titus, this is a faithful sin. That means it will never fail. If only you shall affirm constantly, affirm confidently, constantly, so that we who have believed in God will not just be believers in the mouth or by virtue of confession but by profession you need to be practical about what you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have three by me? Is 
So this is a faithful saying, and these things are we, just like Pastor said. You see, we, his sons, should not try to preach any kind of revelation outside the box. Because some of those things are meaningless. You see, I remember. I remember when I used to learn this story, you know, when you come like that, you want to give out a new words. You try to bring it, even if it's not going to be possible, you try to create a sentence that you can fix that word in. And at the end, you don't speak to the hearts of the people. You don't speak to the conscience of people. You are only nice in speech. You won't sound well. Hallelujah. And what I remember those days, I love I said, Amen. So the things that will help us are the very things that we must go back for. Because many of us are forgetting. You read about the history of Israel. Every time they sinned, it was because they did not remember. They left history to remain a history. So that they can live their life. So if we will go back to our faith constantly, those things that we have been taught, we will be careful to maintain good works. Hallelujah. For many of us, we are losing virtues. We are losing the good works that we were taught to have. Amen. Amen. So maintain good works. Please read. Amen. Tito. Or Titus. So I don't read the state. Works 
are lost. I mean, priorities. Let's get into the Bible, Matthew chapter 6. Let's pray for Yes. 
in the order of our prioritization. Because you are careful of things of life. And when you don't have them, you are sad. You are 
Because for God, he thought you were mad in your mind. And everybody sees that something is wrong with you. But you have the same attitude towards spirituality. You don't come to church, you don't care. But you cannot afford to, to miss work. I went to somebody, and the person said, he said, I, I, I said, I'll come to church then. And I said, it's too early. I said, what time do you go to church for, for wedding? I said, what time do you go for wedding? What time do you go for wedding? So Lima can go to work at her five. What is she? Five o'clock. They said, we don't have the same tenacity. When it comes, we got the same. And I'll show you. I'll show you. And today, all of us will be required to take our spiritual life more seriously than any life. Amen. In the same way, you don't have money shows on you. When you are spiritually down, weak, frustrated, it shows on you. When you lift up a prayer, it shows in the church. When a good word is preached, it falls in the chair. Nobody receives. Nobody jumps for it. Nobody wants to say amen. Because what you need is not what you are hearing. You want to hear your work well. Your work will work well. I see money. I see. Go on, of your account with money. All those things are just to excite you to hear the next statement.
and you are shy. You are going to the market so what? breaks down, how do you feel? And if your spiritual life breaks down, you don't feel anything. Could you imagine you are going to work and then your belt just tears? Your fan belt. You know, I know what you do. Oh my God.
that in every mood you will consider your spiritual life first. Even if you have two dresses as a woman, you know, I look good in it. Many of us waited until seven o'clock this morning before you thought of ironing your dress. But the dresses you take for work, you iron them five days before. Five days earlier. What kind of person are you? Women mostly are always late for church. Husbands, I used to come early to church. Since you married, we know what keeps you late. It is about the same children you complain. But when it comes to work, you don't have any complaint. You, you don't mind waking up, leaving them, kissing them goodbye. And when it comes to church time, you say, I'm in my brain, my brain, my brain. I'm in my brain. Why? Dakakra. So a little sleep, a little slumber. So your poverty will come upon you as an armed man. It will spill all, it will drain all your prayer life. You will no longer have interest in reading the Bible. You started to read what took your mind away. You started so well. First and foremost in your life. On the list of things that mean a lot to you, which one is first? If you can forget to pray before you move out, there's something that's important than God. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat. We think of what we shall eat. As we are here, we are thinking of what we are going to eat. Some people have their minds on their drinks after church service. <laughs> we go to work without sitting. Even when we are sitting, we go, give me sweat. Oh, 
Go to your uncle. We have the apps. Name them. Yeah. We don't ever have a camera. Because we don't set our priorities for that. We don't know what must be proud to all other things. We don't know what must be important and dear to us than any other thing. You can take the kingdom. You can take the throne. But God, do not take from me your mountain. Renew in me a step of spirit. Tread in me a clean heart. I can lose everything but not you. So David, I give you three days. Three years of famine. Three years of being in the hands of the enemy. And then God moving against you. He said, God, let me fall into your hands. Because I know you are merciful. But if I fall into the hands of them, they will deal with me. He was ready to lose anything. All I saw was ready in disobedience to keep material blessings. Many times we have lost spiritual things, goodies. But when we are praying, we don't pray about them. We pray about worldly things. Spiritual life I told you. If we were to see it spiritually, we see that there's a river carrying a lot of things away. Kind things, kind of spirituality, kind of material things. But we go ahead to take, to deliver the material things. How many of us will come and sleep in this house with all the heat and just pray, go restore my prayer life? Go restore my prayer life. But when you don't have a job, you come and sleep here. When you don't have money, you come and sleep here. When you marry also, you don't have a child, you come and sleep here. When you have your your wife is in labor and the labor is so difficult, you come and sleep here and pray. Even when your phone stops, you pray. I remember when I used to have this kind of sister. The battery went so down, it couldn't come alive again. You know what I did? I said, by the resurrection power, I will so let you have a fight in the name of Jesus. And I ordered it and came alive. <laughs> I would like you to say that if my spiritual battery is there. I don't want that joyful coming to Jesus. Because we have problems. And when God sees like that, He says, These people don't have true love towards me. Something could take their emotions more than me. In worship, God requires our emotions. I'm telling you. Because you cannot express without emotions. So what are your emotions? What is your mind in worship? How was your fuel day before you came to church? You might be thinking about it. Probably you are thinking about it. And these things are things that we will certainly think about. So Christ said, take no thought. Because he knows that by taking thought, it's not just thinking about it too. Is paying a dear attention, very dear attention. Because if they just thought, you will not be moved. He's talking about a certain kind of attention that we give to things of life. So you see, if you are thinking about God, okay, you are thinking about money, you are thinking about food, you are thinking about drink, you are thinking about what dress, and thinking about what house. How many priorities do you have? Are they not this up? This up priorities. This priorities. Hallelujah. And you know why we have that many priorities? Because there are two things you don't establish. In our lives, then we must establish them. Are you here? For a better prioritization, there are two things you must understand your value and purpose. Are you here to it? Your value. Value of God is our king. Oh, 
Hogwarts, 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 and Hogwarts. Big house stone, Hogwarts. So I go try that. Any boy say, I have got some boy so easy. Let me teach you. The boys, the boys, and the boys say. So for us to be able to prioritize our things well, we must one understand our value and purpose. Tell somebody we must understand our value and purpose. As a somebody who born, any purpose is it? O butai, o buo, and o butai asi. Can't you? For us to better prioritize our life, our things, we have to understand our value and our purpose. What is your value? What is your value? Amen. What is my value? You are not what you think you are. Are you getting it? You are not what you think you are. Tell somebody you are not what you think you are. You are not what you think you are. So what do you think you really are? What do you think you really are? Because if you miss your true value, you can never set your priorities right. I'll help you understand. Give me water, a bottle of water. And you have this one more. Yes. You can imagine me asking this water, what is your value? What is your value? Check what is the value of this? by somebody about all the labels, we realized that aqua was the best. How do you tell aqua is now the last? So you are not what you think you are. I'm going to show you who you are and who I am and who we are. That is our value. So the moment we know our value, our attention is shifted. Our priority is reset. And our concentration changes. 
your now we understand value. Amen. Job chapter 10, verse um, 11 to 12. And Job chapter 33, verse 4. Genesis 3, 7. First Thessalonians 5, 23. We can read in that order. First, Job 10, 11 to 12. What is my value? What is my value? What is your value? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I stop you this morning? Huh? Women, in a section of my please get up. Let me show you something. Let me ask you something. Oh, please, women, get up. If only a woman, get up. Watch your man, you sorry. And then look at your face and see if there is a woman there. As a person, how much attention do you pay to remove dark spots on your face? Let's read Job 10, 11 to Job. You understand? It's right there. 
You are not what you think you are. I am not what we may think you God bless you, sir. Drop to 10 verse 11. Now you are exposed. We know how much you pay for your faces. <laughs> Some people pay every month. You, you go to every mountain, every hills, and in the morning, Saturdays and Sundays, women are jogging because they think they are their flat belly. They think they are their buttocks. They think they are their thighs.
boy inside. So when this body collapses, you go out of it. When this body is laid down to the dust, you, you live. You leave the body. You leave the body. You leave it behind. So why is it that we pay a deep attention to the thing that is not us? I shall go to dust. For from it it was taken. But we don't pay attention to the real us. I remember when I did that. All the mahogany trees know him. He was from my list.
to keep them from here, they go and turn and come. So God bless us again. He will move us from here, we go for there again. There again. What day? Now what day? Lumpe, what day? I know what day. What day? What what day? Lumpe, what day? Lumpe, ni inti ni ni inti ni rewra mi mi. Eh rewra mi ni mu. Hallelujah. Now who ye dear ya? Mama, please don't miss that. He said you have you have like penetrated me with veins and tissues. Now, if I was this, being penetrated will bring blood out. That is your something else. If things like that would enter you, then you must be spiritual. You are not a body. Because if I should even remove your own bone and pierce you with it, blood will come out. But here Job is saying that you have pierced me, you have you have you have pushed bones, sinews, and tiny into me. When you wake up early in the morning, 
some men like somebody I know. Early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning, because you think you are Our skin is 
Amen. Let's see the other of these things that are part of us. The first is our next part of the prayer. And the very God of peace. And the very God of peace. Sanctify you. Sanctify you holy. And I pray that. And I pray that. I pray God. Your whole spirit. Your whole spirit. And soul. And soul. And body. Which one is the last? Which one is the first? The spirit. As I'm not telling you anything. Anger, no matter how beautiful we look on the outside, we are very ugly. An angry person is an ugly person. It takes all over you. You misbehave. I'm sure to that. The real body is not this one. People value you based on their character and manifest. So if you allow the flesh to lead you to lie, to lead you to gossip, to lead you to betray, to be full of anger, you're not good. Hallelujah. Any of us, when we die, they bury this one. But the one inside of this body goes out to stand before God. What preparation have you made for you? In the world, maintaining the good works. What we have been taught, what we have learned, let us maintain. And to maintain, we must not have a true value. Money, your pocket may not money, but if you are rich in God, you are rich in the nature of God. And concentrate on that. Mm -hmm. Many of us are poor when it comes to the nature of God. But we are only thinking about the body, the poverty of the body. So we do all we can. When was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you fasted? When was the last time you studied the Bible? How long does it, does it take you to forgive, to let go? How long do you keep anger? How long do you keep balance? Amen. Amen. So by this understanding, this man's real worth is found. Therefore, your spiritual health or state must be prior to every other thing of life. Did you get it? So no matter how tired we get throughout the day, we eat. We rest. We drink. We dress. Mother will tell you. And when we are tired, we see them. You know, think to pray. Think to study the Bible. We just fall on the bed and sleep. And by doing that all the time, we realize that prayer will not be interest. Amen. And the last part of it, the purpose. What you are available for or why you were born might be very important to you. A way of living originates from one's true purpose of life. Are you getting it? A way of living, the way you live is brought about by your purpose. So if you don't have a purpose in life, you don't have a spiritual purpose, you don't know why God made you. You don't know that God called you. 
us as Christians unto holiness to manifest the praise of God, being our purpose, then you become a liar and drunkard. You lose your true purpose because you've lost your value. Hallelujah. Were you created to lie? Were created to were born again to manifest the righteousness of God. That's our true purpose. So wherever we find ourselves, having our purpose in mind, it will help us maintain the good way. Hallelujah. We don't talk the way we do. Your discussions are away from my belief. And you don't establish your purpose in mind. So you fall and compromise with them. You find yourself doing what they do, walking the path they walk. And bless you see that that was turned in the path of sins. But you always find yourself there because you don't know your purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. But you can't say to yourself, you don't know why you went there. You think for marriage, when you marry, maintain your purpose. Because it is the body that enjoys the marriage. And when you die, out of our covenant, that most women and most men, you will remarry if your spouse leaves. You will remarry. And these are the things you are dying for. These are the things you are living for. We take it to the body because we think we are the body. And we don't know how to value and purpose. Let these things you have learned today. They established in you. Amen. Amen. Continue Santa. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Any question? Is there any question? If I leave, I leave for you. Should I die? I die for you. In all my ways, I'll never find. Should I leave? I leave. Of the body and the belt of truth. Women buy Brazil, but we don't have a grace plate of righteousness. We buy the tight ones. I've lost my. We buy spectacles for your eyes against the sun and particles in the air. Are your eyes watch anything? You get ear bars to remove the wax in your ears, but your ears have no protection against lies of the enemy. You pay attention to anything. Let us take care of the real us and maintain the good works. The works that go through Pastor Philip has built in us. Let us maintain them. Go and get your prayer life back. The relationship with the word, reading the Bible all the time. Tell the Bible. And this will help you to be very prayerful and spiritual. Knowing your true way and meaning. The good Lord bless you. God bless our Father for the opportunity. Pastor Sandy, God bless you, please. The God offering to the Lord as it comes.
Jesus. That great grace over his life, his life, and his ministry. That the Lord should continue to use him. The Lord should move him from glory to glory. We pray for divine empowerment. That the Lord should keep him to the end. Father, we bless you, Lord, for his life. Bless God for the way that came today. The last time he said that if you want to, if you want your first love, you have to start doing the first work. Let's go back to the first works. Our prayer life, our quiet time, our Bible discussions. Because I've been saying that there is no book that can teach you how to pray unless you pray. And if you want God to have time for you, you have to try and make time for Him. God bless you, my brother, Pastor Evans. God bless you for today. You are praying for yourself. That the Lord should restore you. The Lord should give you grace. Pray that the Lord should restore you in that prayer life. The Lord should give you grace to keep the fire. Tomorrow at 6, we'll be meeting at the park for our evening prayers. Let's do all to come and intercede for the missionaries in the church. And anytime we go before the Lord, remember to keep the pastor in prayers. And the pastor's wives, that they left them behind. Today, Sister Magdalena is not in church, Sister Ambrose is not in church. Let's call them and check out on them. This is my total. Amen. Let's be on the fence.